Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. First of all, first of all, I'd like to recognize uh, His Excellency, former Vice President, Secretary General, and Party Leader of the United Democratic Party, His Excellency Usenu Numukunda Dabo. I would also like to recognize the First Lady of the United Democratic Party, Auntie Mai Dabo. <laughs> of course, uh, Mr. Dr. Dabo, who is here, who is uh, Mr. Dabo's brother. <laughs> I want to recognize the members representing the Gambia Democratic Congress under His Excellency, Mr. Mama Kande. I would also like to recognize the members here present representing the National Unity Party led by Mr. Abdullah Jamme, the Gambia Action Party led by Mr. Musa Bachili, and of course the um, People's Alliance Party led by Mr. Ibrahim Atabo Ramani. Of course, all the individual politicians who do not subscribe to any party but support our candidacy, I recognize your presence here today. And of course, the Deputy Mayor of KMC, Aja Binta Jane Jalo, and my Honorable Councillors, who are the backbone and the foundation of the Council. All National Assembly members present Welcome to the launching of our manifesto for 2023 to 2028. I would like to recognize the media houses here present and thank them for coming to hear what we have planned for the people of KM. And of course, the wonderful team led by uh, Aja Binta Kamara, who are the ones who organize this event. As KMU has rightly said, uh, our KMC from 2018 to date has been a people-centered KMC or people-centric KMC where whatever we do, we think about the impact on the grassroots, we think about the impact on the vulnerable and how to move our communities forward. And when we came, of course, there were a myriad of problems facing the Carnifing Municipal Council. At the center, at the core, was that the KMC was not a service-driven institution, but was run as a political enterprise for the party at the helm. This was our first task, and we have succeeded in changing KMC to be a service-oriented institution, to be a professional place where all Gambians from different walks of life can come and perform and find a meaning in serving the population and serving the residents. This we have achieved, and this is why today we are able to boast several projects that we have brought about that have become unprecedented in Gambian history. Of course, we have also focused heavily on youths and how to improve their lives. Today, KMC is building eight facilities that are parks where youths can go and play and train and have their leisurely activities. These parks have been spread around the municipality in communities who have never seen or ever believed that they would have such a facility in their backyard. We are also building the first ever municipal library and also the biggest library in the history of the Gambia. I think this is a project that is very dear to me. Being a student growing up in the municipality, there was not such a place where you could go and study, unless you were lucky that your school had such a facility. Now imagine children who live in very densely populated communities, in very crowded households, in Kabilos, where they can be up to 50 to 100 people. There is no chance they could find a quiet place to study. This is the motivation behind it. And with the help of my councillors, we are able to succeed and now building a $42 million library. 
in the many achievements of KMC, of course, is market infrastructure. Over, we found out that most of the municipal markets, or I could say 19 of the municipal markets that existed were neglected, were, uh, were, were down and were falling apart, and we had to focus to rehabilitate all of these markets. KMC over the years has rehabilitated over 10 markets around the municipality and expanded about two of them. We have also constructed four new markets, starting with Talinding Jilifitikunda market, Latrikunda Sabiji market, with an expansion, of course, with another extra 100 shops. We have also constructed Talinding Yafa Tunjai market and currently almost completed the brand new Kotu market. We also have invested heavily in waste management services. Of course, the unprecedented Balit project, which has been doing a tremendous job in keeping our communities clean, which is a project that was so capital intensive, many did not believe a mayor municipality could pull it off. But with shared ideas, with sleepless nights and overtime hours, the council and I brought about this project and now we fully own, all the people of KMC fully own these 24 brand new trucks. And may I take this opportunity to announce that in one week's time, we will be adding seven new trucks to this fleet. Of course, the biggest health crisis we have in the municipality is the Barkote Dom site, which is a health hazard. And those who have been around for a while know that it was once a quarry, which was 25 meters deep, and it was uh, 18,000 hectares large. And this quarry eventually turned into a dump site for the last 30 years. And of course, the community has moved next door now it is surrounded by residents, schools, hospitals, etc. Any mayor who wants to come, any council that wants to come, must prioritize this site. And that's what we did. With the help of the council, we have fully secured the site with taxpayers' funds by building a 1.8 kilometer fence. Through our leadership, we have solicited funding from the German government and the SOS and have gotten $42 million in infrastructure development at the dump site. Uh, those who live by the dump site will attest and will tell you that they have felt their health improve because of our interventions. We can say for the last 24 months, there has not been a single fire at the dump site, which is unprecedented. This is because we have invested in a water hydration system we have gotten fire tenders that are on standby to ensure that the site is cool and well managed. We can stay here and talk all day on the various developments that we have done, but I believe majority of people of KM already have seen and felt them. What we are really here to do today is to talk about our plans moving forward. In our party, with the UDP, our party leader has always taught us to not promise as politicians, but to always talk about our plans. <laughs> Promises are dangerous because if they fail, they become lies. So what we prefer to talk about is what our plans are for the municipality. And based on our track record, we solicit your trust to give us a second mandate so that we can finish our work. Again, going forward, our manifesto would be people-centered, people-centric manifesto. We are about the grassroots, we are about our communities, and this is why councils were created. So we want to focus on areas that bring uh, uh, quality of life or improve the quality of life of our residents. Of course, when we were coming into office, waste management was at the top of our list because of the myriad of dump sites that existed in communities, riverine areas, gutters, abandoned homes, and markets. When we came, we prioritized waste management, but we are glad to say now that this is fixed, 
we want to move to other areas. At the top of our list this coming five years is road infrastructure. We know, based on surveys we have done with our residents, based on feedback we have gotten from our councillors, the road network is the biggest complaint in the municipality. Therefore, the council, before we ended this first mandate, have passed a project called the KMRNP, the Carnifing Municipal Road Network Project. This project, which will cost more than $300 million over the next four to five years, will construct 23 kilometers of roads in our municipality and six kilometers worth of drain network. It will connect every ward via bypass routes. And of course, we will ensure where there are schools, mosques, and places of convergence, we will consider road safety with signs and sleeping police to ensure traffic is controlled. We move to the next major item, which is still waste management. As I have said, we, by next week, we would have completely fixed and arrested waste collection at residences and commercial centers. But of course, processing is still a work in progress. Therefore, the council plans to bring about a project that will recycle more than 80% of waste collected. We will support, of course, small entrepreneurs to build waste management and processing businesses. We will also construct a new way bridge so that we can weigh and know the amount of tonnage of waste that enters the dump site on a daily basis. We will solicit funding or capital investment from businesses in waste management around the world that we are already in talks with to bring about a transfer station and recycling facility at the Barcote dump site. On our third main agenda, which is a bane for many people, a problem that many of our communities are suffering from, and this is housing. As we know, KMC's population is growing exponentially because this is the place where most Gambians want to live. We have the better facilities, health, education, road, sanitation, etc. So many people want to come and live in KMC, causing massive population growth. Also, the birth rate in KM is very high, causing a, a big population growth year in, year out. Therefore, housing has come under pressure. The amount of people looking for housing is on the rise, and this has caused landlords to increase rental prices month on month. Government has not done its part by regulating the rents by creating price ceilings to ensure that landlords are not exploiting poor residents. Therefore, because of government's uh, lack of intervention, the council wants to embark on an affordable housing program. This afford affordable housing program will target vulnerable families, such as single mothers with small children, and of course, young families who have just started out. We have begun to set up a company that will build several thousand new homes over the next 10 years. Number four, we know KMC or the Gambia has a high unemployment rate. Most youths, most families, most people depend on self-employment and street hawking and petty trade to feed their families. They depend on these businesses to pay for their children's school fees and of course to pay for their rents and other basic necessities. However, we don't have enough markets to cater for all these vendors, thus causing a problem of street vending. Therefore, KM has already set up a solution called Carnifying Municipal Markets. Our councillors and I, over the past two years, have set up this company and we have designed and identified seven markets that we intend to build around the municipality. This will cost the council over $240 million over the next five years. And we have already identified 
the seven centers in which we will build these markets. These markets also will be a market of difference. As we have traveled around the world, we have learned from sister municipalities, and we have found in Freetown where markets are being built with daycare centers because many of the vendors in these markets, especially the women, have small children that they, don't, uh, uh, they can't afford to live at home. So therefore, when we build these markets, we will cater for these women by building daycare centers as part of the facilities these markets will provide. <laughs> Our fifth agenda, of course, is municipal transport. The KM has set up a company called Carnifing Municipal Transport. We have tried vigorously to bring about affordable, efficient, accessible transport for our residents. We know government has pushed to bring many buses. We thank them for that and we congratulate them, but it's still solving the problem. Because the buses brought about by government are charging exactly the same fares as public taxis. That is not affordable service. They also don't traverse community roads. They only focus on main highways. They also don't cater for people who are differently abled or elderly. And therefore, the Carnifing Municipal Council still believes we have to bring about an urban transport system that is affordable, meaning it is cheaper than public taxis, that is accessible, meaning it will traverse our community roads, and that will also cater for people of differently abled and the elderly. <laughs> On the last item, which is a standard council service, focusing around youths and social services, the council still wants to be a youth-led council and a council that exclusively ensures that our youths are taken care of. The reason we focus on youths because youths are the engine of any productive society and are the future leaders of tomorrow. Investing in youths means investing in Gambia's future. Neglecting youths means neglecting the future of our country. Therefore, in any project that we embark on, we will ensure that we prioritize youth employment. We will ensure that it has a youth focus to ensure our youths are active and are using their skills to the best of their ability. On top of that, the council has learned from councils that are in more developed countries, and we wish to set up an office of public information. The reason being, we find that many residents of KM have a disconnect with what services they're entitled to, both on the local government level and at the national government level services such as immigration services, services such as health services, education services, municipal services, Gambia government services. We want to ensure that there is a connection between our residents and these government departments. Therefore, we will bring about an Office of Public Information that will have a legal backbone and offer free legal service, will assist in guidance and counselorship in how to access government services, etc. Having said all this, we are proud to therefore say the manifesto of Talib Ahmed Bensouda is officially launched. Thank you very much.